Hello friends, what's up? I know your NEET PG exams are going to approach and it's too near. So I will revise you of a very important topic from Gyne Ops, the ectopic pregnancy, very frequently asked and you cannot afford to miss any question from this topic. So I will summarize the topic very fast. Just keep your concentration and keep listening. So what is ectopic pregnancy? It is the gestational presence of gestational sac outside the uterine cavity. So one question is asked if the ectopic pregnancy is cornual means two types of uh, if the sac is seen in cornu or if it is seen in the angular region. So will it be ectopic pregnancy? So in case of angular pregnancy it does it is not intra you, it is intrauterine that is it is not ectopic pregnancy while the cornual pregnancy is ectopic pregnancy how you can say this is that in cornual pregnancy it lies lateral to the round ligament while the angular pregnancy it lies medial to the round ligament so you have to just remember that the cornual pregnancy is ectopic while the ang angular is not ectopic it is intrauterine or the normal pregnancy now another thing is heterotropic pregnancy it is said when both intrauterine and an extrauterine gestational sac is present there means two pregnant two gestational sac one intrauterine and one extrauterine pregnancy both occur simultaneously then it is called heterotropic pregnancy so another question is most common site for the ectopic pregnancy so it will be fallopian tube now if you see within the fallopian tube the most common site is ampulla followed by isthmus and the fimbrial end. Now another question which is asked is after fallopian tube with the other common sites for ectopic pregnancy then it comes to ovary then cervix and then cervical cesarean section scar ectopic least is cesarean section scar ectopic. So other important question is the most common risk factor see so the most most common risk factor is the presence of previous ectopic pregnancy see after one ectopic pregnancy the risk of having another ectopic is increased by 10 percent other most common risk factor is PID pelvic inflammatory disease and then the tubal surgery any tubal surgery will lead to additions and will increase the risk of ectopic pregnancy now see as such the contraceptives reduce the incidence of ectopic but if you see if it is asked ki within contraceptive what procedures increase the incidence of ectopic so it will be sterilization means it is an operative procedure so obviously it will increase the risk of ectopic it will increase the risk of adhesion and thus it will increase the risk of ectopic pregnancy so among the contraceptive methods sterilization then IUD intrauterine devices and then progesterone only pills these increase the relative risk so uh, if you see if there is one question that key, is the history of ectopic a contraindication of IUD so here it is not a, as such a contraindication for intra, intrauterine device insertion other risk factors are cervicitis multiple sex partners a previous cesarean section DEC and smoking these all increase the risk of ectropic so how you clinically see a case of ectropic it has a triad of presentation presenting with pain amenorrhea and pervaginal bleeding these occur in the same order means most commonly you will see the patient presenting with pain and then amenorrhea and then bleeding pervaginal other signs and symptoms you will see on examination clinically will be tachycardia hypotension abdominal tenderness on pervaginal examination you can see the cervical motion tenderness, adnexal tenderness and adnexal mass and uterus will be enlarged but not as much as in normal pregnancy. So other features you will see clinically is shoulder tip pain which may occur due to rupture or the hemoperitoneum due to phrenic nerve irritation. Abdominal pain may be due to rupture or, uh, uh, occurring and leading to peritonitis. Now pain in unruptured ectopic pregnancy, this is asked question, Will is due to T12, T11 and L1 due to the nerve supply of fallopian tube and it is due to stretching of fallopian tube, the pain is due to stretching of fallopian tube uh, conducted by T11, 12 and L1. 
now the other question asks is which type of ectopic ruptures and which type of up uh, ectopic abort so you see the most common type of ectopic is fallopian among fallopian is ampullary so as we see the means we say the ectopic rupture but you see the most common ectopic that is ampullary ectopic do not rupture means it most commonly it get aborted and if it get ruptured then it will get ruptured at around or after 8 weeks and you see the isthmic if isthmic uh, ectopic ruptures it ruptures at around 6 weeks and if intramural or interstitial ruptures it will rupture around 12 to 16 weeks so most earliest uh, uh, will be the isthmic to rupture 6 week then the ampullary 8 weeks and then the intramural or interstitial rupture that is 12 to 16 week the intramural ruptures late as it is supported by myometrium and is most catastrophic at the uterus also ruptures means it is the most grave condition the isthmic one and it is also the less common one so for ectopic to rule out if the urine pregnancy test is negative you can say that the ectopic pregnancy is not there but in some cases it is faintly positive and in most of the cases it is positive so if the urine pregnancy test is positive or faintly positive and in usg there is a empty uterine cavity so you need to see mean suspect for ectopic and best evidence for ectopic will be gestational sac which is outside the uterine cavity you see a gestational sac a yolk sac and the cardiac activity outside the uterine cavity so if the u in usg if the findings are also equivocal means you cannot find or say certainly with the ultrasound reports then you can uh, ask the patient to get a beta scg basal levels so if the beta scg levels are more than 1500 and usg didn't show any uterine pregnancy then you can probably suspect that it is a case of ectopic as the beta scg is above 1500 showing the Uh, levels means of pregnancy but the usg is not showing intrauterine sac then you can suspect ectopic and ask the patient to get a beta scg after 48 hours now usually we say it get, get doubles after 48 hours but what really happens is it gets increased to 66% what we say is double but the actual value is it increases to 66% of the basal value and if it get increases to 66% of basal value we say that the the pregnancy is intrauterine means it is not ectopic now i will discuss four possibilities regarding ectopic if you ask the patient to get a beta scg and the value is above 1500 for the first time and in transvaginal ultrasonography if the intrauterine sac is is still not seen means after abdominal you ask the patient to get a tvs transvaginal sonography and if it in also it is not seen then it is probably a confirmed case of ectopic now if the levels of beta scg falls after 1500 then it will be after 48 hours then it will be a non viable pregnancy and if the value remains same it you can say the uh, it is a ectopic and the, if the value rises above 66% if the value rises but not 66% it will be ectopic and if the rises above 66% or 66% it will be intrauterine as said before therefore if asked the best investigation to diagnose ectopic so it will be combination of transvaginal ultrasonography and serial beta scg but if one has to choose among both then it will be transvaginal ultrasonography which is the most confirmatory a combination of tvs and serum beta scg is best but if among those among you have to choose one then it will be transvaginal sonography other tests which are not frequently used but you should know is the serum progesterone level so if the serum progesterone level is greater than 25 nanogram per ml it is a normal intrauterine pregnancy and if it is less than 5 nanogram per ml then it is a ectopic non viable pregnancy in previous years or previous days we used to do culto synthesis which is not done now what we do is to diagnose a ruptured ectopic we aspirate the blood and if the blood does not clot in 10 minutes then we we will say that the blood is due to the collection is due to ectopic pregnancy rupture rupture of ectopic pregnancy now one important question which was asked in upsc 2016 was 
कॉल्पोटोमी फॉर वॉट कॉल्पोटोमी वॉज डन सो कॉल्पोटोमी इज अ प्रोसीजर सर्जिकल प्रोसीजर इन विच वी ओपन द पाउच ऑफ डगलेस जस्ट टू ड्रेन द एप्सिस सो टू ड्रेन द एप्सिस एंड द वी ओपन द पाउच ऑफ डगलेस बाय अ प्रोसीजर कॉल कॉल्पोटोमी नाउ द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ द एक्टोपिक प्रेगनेंसी इज इट्स मैनेजमेंट वी डू टू टाइप्स ऑफ मैनेजमेंट the medical which is done less commonly and surgically which is done most commonly for medical we should uh, fulfill few criteria like the patient should be hemodynamically stable which is the first most uh, criteria and the sac size should be less than 3.5 cm and beta scg should be less than 5 and 5000 units so beta scg less than 5000 sac less than 3.5 cm hemodynamically stable patient with a preferable card absence of cardiac activity in the gsac it is also preferable means if present it can also be present but preferably cardiac activity should be present for the medical management to be started what we do is we start the patient with methotrexate 50 mg intramuscular on day 1 and we see the serum beta scg value on day 4 and then day 7 when we say the treatment is successful if the serum beta scg level falls at least 15% on the day 4 and successively and if it is not achieved on day 4 the 15 means beta c doesn't fall less than 15% from the basal value then we will give a second do- dose of methotrexate means a 50 mg im again on the day 4 and it can be repeated three times like this to to means gain the desired value now the another uh, thing is uh, middle uh, treatment like expected management which is done less commonly in the patient the criteria to be done is to fulfill is hemodynamically stable patient sac size less than 3.5 cm and beta scg level less than 2000 in which is falling gra- fra- falling in sun- uh, successively now the surgical management which is most commonly indicated which is most commonly done and the most common indication for surgical management is that the pre- your patient is hemodynamically unstable ruptured ectopic other indication is failed medical and third indication is patient does not want future conception so you can go t- towards the surgical management and the fourth is if the methotrexate is contraindicated in patient laparoscopy is preferred over laparotomy as a surgical procedure and we do salpingostomy over salpingotomy means salpingostomy is preferred over salpingotomy as the risk is higher with the salpingotomy now salpingectomy means total excision of the fallopian tube is done when the sac size is more than 5 cm ectopic pregnancy size more than 5 cm tube is badly injured or the patient does not want future conception or there is continuous bleeding from the tube means hemostasis cannot be achieved then we can go for salpingectomy to save the patient now the partial is preferred over total salpingectomy as uh, for the patient it will be beneficial if the if the patient want a future child so we may go for partial and then we may uh, repair in the future now some other question which are very important and frequently asked is rubin's criteria spill spiegelberg criteria and steady form criteria these all criteria are for ectopic pregnancy but of what uh, means different ectopic pregnancy like rubin is for cervical ectopic spiegelberg is for ovarian and steady form is for abdominal and after knowing this you should know what the presentation of cervical ectopic in cervical ectopic we see no pain but only bleeding and for management of stable hemodynamically stable cervical ectopic pregnancy we go for methotrexate that is medical management spiegelberg for ovarian we do surgical method means surgical management and for abdominal that is steady form criteria for abdominal ectopic pregnancy the patient complains of pain and we go for surgical management It means except cervical we go for surgical for ovarian and abdominal and the difference we see with ectopic and abdominal ectopic is that in cervical ectopic we see no pain but only bleeding and in steady form and in abdominal ectopic we see only pain means major uh, complaint will be pain so this completes a very important and you cannot miss this topic so you can listen again 
and make note of this topic thank you